Hello, this is Scott. Welcome back to my YouTube channel where I cover a variety of different data science topics, uh, analytics, statistics, machine learning, and uh, we have discussions as well as talk about platforms. Today we're going to be talking about a commercial platform called Statistica, and specifically we're going to be talking about clustering. And um, in this one, we're going to be talking about automated neural networks, um, Cajonan networks, Cajonan clustering, or self-organizing maps. So if you've been with me recently, we, we've actually covered uh, a few of these on clustering, K-means, EM, uh, two-way joining, and then now we're going to talk about um, this, uh, these neural nets. So uh, the data set we're going to use is actually included within the platform. So if I go up to data sets and I'm going to select the uh, IRIS SNN data set, this is actually uh, based on Fisher's Irish IRIS data, which is a very, um, a very classical statistical by R.A. Fisher, a famous statistician, um, and where he's got uh, sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width, and then the flower, um, and it's used for classification problems. Again, this, is, this set's been around for probably 100 years, um, but, uh, but very useful. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to illustrate this actually within a workspace, and then we're going to we're going to come back um, to it with uh, uh, looking at it uh, outside of a workspace just through through menus. But I'm going to I'm going to go here. I'm going to select new, and then workspace. I'm going to select a blank workspace, and then I'm going to select this data set that I have open um, for illustration. All right, so. Um, where do I find the self-organizing maps or uh, Cajonan networks? If you go up to neural nets and go to SAN clustering, we'll connect this data set up here and we'll look at different options. For the variables option, we're going to select these four continuous variables um, that we'll cluster on. Uh, note that by default, I'm using the custom neural networks, and I'll continue to do that. Um, sampling, I'm going to use the, the sampling that's uh, by default, so 70% training, 15% uh, test, and 15% validation. Note this is really not a, a large data set, but um, but it's useful for, for illustration. Uh, clustering result obviously comes um, with the amount of data and the amount of signal that's produced in the, in the data. And so what we're doing here is we are creating a, um, a training set to actually build the network, and then we're using a test set to verify the performance of the training algorithm um, as they run, and then I'm going to uh, have a uh, final validation set to determine how well the network actually predicts against new data. All right, so um, let's look at some of the other things that we can do here. Um, on the quick, uh, I'm going to make a couple of changes to the defaults. Um, I'm going to make this three for the t the top of topological height and I'm going to make this six for the topological width um, and the I, I could switch the the training here um, for the the learning rates as well as the neighborhoods that that are used I'm going to leave these as default but just to let you know this is all configurable within the platform and um, uh, it is recommended that you know the mean min pretty much be be zero and the variance max for this network randomization be at 0.1. Um, the neighborhoods could definitely be adjusted. These are 
uh, the neighborhoods is actually probably the, the things that's adjusted uh, most often. And you can see the uh, uh, documentation for that. We'll, we'll use a random seed instead of a fixed seed. On the, um, the samples, we're going to actually, uh, uh, for the results, we'll actually base the results based upon the training sample itself. And predictions, we're going to go ahead and, and this is the default, but we're going to go ahead and add the winning neuron position. And we'll add a couple other things, maybe the predictions, the, the frequencies here. And then the graphs. So you can produce a lot of the different graphics. There's one graphic that's not included. We'll do it at the very end. Um, but let's do a 3D graph. So let's look at, say, sepal length, sepal width and then the activation, and we'll do a uh, surface for that. And then the Cajonan network itself, let's just do a, a plot of that. And then note code, code generator, we could, we could generate any of these types of code, but we'll use uh, PMML and C++, the, the down, the, excuse me, the default. And then I'll get the predictions for the downstream um, as well. Okay. So uh, let me go ahead and run this. And I have results. And let's just spade this out a little bit and get it looking a little better. Um, um, okay. That looks a little better. And let's look at some of the results that we have. All right. So let me maximize this, and get it a little bit larger. Um, so this is the 3D contour that we have. So we can look at the strength of the activation um, functions here. And these, these are the individual plots um, of points above and below the activation function. If we want, we can spin this. We can look, you know, uh, a little bit in depth at this, um, rotate, and even pull this up at the individual points. Um, I can see here that this is point number 83. Uh, the the x-axis, the uh, sepal length is 5.8, and then the um, width is 2.8. 2 um, and I could, you know, append these in any way that I want. We're going to keep this brief, so I won't, won't do too much of the analysis, and you can play with that on your own. The self-organizing map, I can look at the training error is 1.2%, the test error is 1.8%, and the validation error is 2.1%. And I'm using uh, Cajonan for the, the method of training. These are the, the different predictions, and I can look at um, the strength of the activation there, and I can look at the actual position um, so this this is actually going into two six is the cluster that it's actually going into. This is a visual representation of the frequencies for those different um, clusters on the self-organizing map. So um, here I can see that um, I'm in one one here, and I can look at the frequency of those bars there. Again, I can spin this if I want. I can look at this uh, differently. And then um, for the cells, this is just a different view, probably not as good as this, this 3D. Um, and then I can look at the code generated as well. And then one of the other things that I can do, since I did generate predictions, um, by default, I don't, don't carry over the, um, the, the rows that that goes with. But it's easy to do. What I can do is I can go up here to data, and I can do select a merge, uh, concatenate variables. And what I'll do here is I'll, I'll join or, or merge these two sets together, my predictions to the, um, uh, the data that actually generated the prediction, prediction. So I can see here by, this is sorted by the incoming data um, if I want. You know, I can certainly uh, sort this by, let's say, position, and I can look at the positions, and so I can see where 
each one of these is coming into a, uh, a cluster. All right, so that is a quick look at creating a workspace. There is one plot that is is actually kind of nice in the in the data that's not available um, in a, a workspace itself. Let me close this down. Um, let me just generate the data. You can with Statistica, obviously you can work with the data interactively as well. So if I go up here to data mining, I've got a data set open. I'm not in a workspace. I'm actually, I've got the data set. That's my active window. And then I can go up to neural nets and I can select this cluster analysis. And then I can basically replicate the same settings that I had before. I click OK. Um, and uh, actually, let me look at one. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and there's this one plot that um, looks pretty interesting that's not available in the node for output, and that's this Cajonan graph where you can look at the different um, uh, platform, uh, the different uh, uh, cells or, or clusters that are in. Um, there's one thing that I'm looking for because I, I want to set my neighborhood. So let me cancel this. Oh, it's right here. So I want to set this um, uh, topological height. I believe I had three and six. And then um, now I'll train this up. And I get uh, more representative. All right, so I get basically you know a three by six grid here um, and then i can look at the individual values as well so i can see here that there's only one case in this uh, cell or cluster right um, and then i can see these other cases as well and it, it is kind of interesting that i can see how close individual values uh, come to the edge of the cluster as well so anyway um, Hopefully that's that's meaningful, and um, please join me again soon for a, another topic.